So you have understood when you are speaking of uh, L4, we are speaking of very high level of complexity and a high level of cost also. That's one of the reasons uh, that Renault did uh, a choice to uh, focus its energy uh, on mass transportation better than uh, uh, mass mobility, I would say. And so I will give you some uh, insight about uh, our policy. First, uh, and a focus on, uh, on, the, on the public transportation. So that's a long story with uh, our partner. Uh, since 2018, we started the discussion and uh, we took a first participation in the capital of, uh, of WeRide. So a long time ago, we started to collaborate. And since this period, we had uh, several uh, discussion and collaboration. And uh, of course, the, the, from a technical standpoint, the maturity wa was not there totally in 2018. And what you have seen today uh, is, is quite convincing, I would say. And so we can believe that uh, we are uh, um, at the tipping point. The, the things will move uh, fast now. Um, so just a, a reminder about the, the level of, uh, so the classification of uh, the autonomous driving. So what you have uh, on your uh, car today is uh, L2, uh, or L2 plus capabilities, uh, in, in very simple words, you have the full responsibility in any case, any situation. And so there is a, a boundary between L2 and L3. Once you are moving to the L3 capabilities, uh, L, L ends, uh, ends off plus eyes off, you are starting to share the responsibility between the driver and the OEM. This is one, one of the uh, explanation of the slow uh, rollout of these L3 uh, capabilities on, uh, on mass production. Uh, and when you are moving to L3, also you are enriching a lot the technical content of the vehicle. You have to add a lot of sensors, cameras, LIDOS, and so you are increasing significantly the, the cost of the autonomous driving system. And of course, when you are moving to L4, okay, you have under understood that, in fact, you have two drivers, two brake system, two steering uh, system, uh, two power supply system, and two compu computing system also, two computers. So it's a very rich solution, and you can understand, first of all, it's hard to package in a, in a normal car, and second, it's hard to uh, pass the over cost to the, to the customer. And today, the market is not ready, not only at Renault Group, uh, to cope with this over cost due to the benefits. And so, uh, so the, the market today is around L2, L2 plus capabilities. L2 plus is it's, uh, ends off in motorways condition. Uh, L2 plus plus, you have prob probably heard about that. It's the same, but in uh, uh, urban condition. And so probably you will see the shift of the proposal uh, in the coming months or co a couple of years to this L2 plus plus capabilities that appear to be the right balance between performances and, and cost for our customers. You have also in mind that today with electrification of the, of the lineup, we are facing, uh, particularly in Europe, uh, a huge trouble regarding volumes. The drop of the market is around 20% uh, due to this over cost. If you add L3 capabilities on, on top of that, we will kill the market and kill the business. So at Renault, we are having today in our lineup, particularly on the C and D segment, uh, um, a lot of ADAS uh, uh, sticking with a L2 uh, level. Uh, these are a large part is uh, uh, driven by the regulation, uh, GSR2 uh, regulation. Uh, and this is what we can afford and what we consider that is the right answer for, for the market today. And the capabilities are quite uh, interesting for, for the daily usage. Of course, it's not uh, as bright as uh, a, a full hands off uh, solution. Um, what we need uh, when we are considering automotive uh, industry is, of course, a high level of re reliability. So, and in the same time, when we cannot afford this redundancy, uh, we are working hard on systems that are totally reliable. And we have also to, uh, to stick with uh, the environment. You have seen that in Paris condition, okay, there is a, the, a, a unique uh, track to follow, but the conditions are changing all the time. And you have seen that Parisians are not quite, uh, uh, I would say, it's, it's worse than in China, to be very concrete. It used to be uh, uh, like in China, but now Chinese people are driving correctly. They are smooth at, 
while, while driving and in Parisian are not uh, as smooth as uh, Chinese people. So th this complex playground must be tackled by the solution that we are implementing. And we know that today we cannot guarantee at 100% that in, a, in any condition the, the autonomous driving will, uh, uh, will uh, answer correctly. So to come back to that, if we want a full redundancy, we have no more market. So we stick to the L2 capabilities for the time being for mass production. And we can ask our customer many times, they are comfortable with, with this uh, situation. On level four, as mentioned, you have the specific ODD that you are uh, uh, fulfilling. So that's simplifying a little the life. It's not totally autonomous. You stick, you stick also to the, you have an external monitoring in case of. So it's not uh, completely uh, a piece uh, of mind for, for the operator, but it's moving on the right direction. Of course, you are making a, a savings, significant saving. You mentioned 80%. It's in, I don't know if it's in Chinese condition. Right. Chinese. So it's even higher in European condition, probably. Higher. Yes, maybe higher. Yeah, you are not paying the same cost to the drivers. Of course, so, so despite this monitoring, this external monitoring, we are already making uh, savings, uh, significant savings. Uh, but you have seen that the maturity is available. We, are, we have a smooth drive. That is not uh, always the case with a real driver. It is taking, um, I would say, normal risk like a human being. It's engaging itself uh, even in complex condition, and so, so uh, you, you do not have all this hesitation that we, they used to have in, uh, in the past. It was not comfortable for the passenger uh, two years ago, if you have a look, a look back. So what about uh, uh, the, the orientation taken by Renault Group? So as mentioned, today technology for L4, we think is not the right one for mass production. And so we consider that it is the right answer for public transportation. Uh, end users are looking for flexibility, for proximity. Uh, public authorities are looking for, uh, I would say, uh, um, also flexibility, in, but not in the same uh, terms. Flexibility means uh, you don't install large buses uh, for a huge variation of traffic. So you are right-sizing your uh, uh, transport offer. So you are able to install small buses when you need small buses and operate small buses with reduced cost. And so at the end, for the public authorities, is the cost of operating the, the buses. And for the operator, it's also a, um, a good answer uh, regarding the scarcity of drivers. It's not uh, specific to Europe. Everywhere in the world, when you are uh, uh, operating uh, services for uh, transportation of people or goods, you are facing this scarcity. And so it will increase. And so we can say it is cutting jobs, but in the same time, we have no uh, candidates for these jobs. So we have to provide the services full time. Uh, so we have to cope uh, with this scarcity of drivers. Uh, and we have also to uh, answer to the, to the need of flexibility in the operation. And so we can get this flexibility with uh, these uh, buses, uh, autonomous uh, driving buses. In comparison with uh, usual uh, I would say uh, uh, solutions. Of course, uh, we do not engage the same investment when you are dealing with these uh, uh, driverless buses. Of course, there is an overcost, clear overcost when you are acquiring the bus, but very quickly you can make savings in the operation and uh, amortization. Or, uh, I don't know what, what is the amortization period of a bus, is 10 years? 15? Between 10 to 15? Uh, you can amortize over cost uh, three to four years after the, the acquisition, more or less. Something like that, yes. So you understand the profitability is, qu is quite interesting. You can amortize this over cost very quickly. So, so initial investment is uh, lower in comparison with large buses and trams and, and, uh, and, and trains, of course. But uh, in comparison with standard buses, you have a, a a significant overcost, but a three to four years amortization period is quite interesting for all the operators. And of course, when you operate this uh, right size uh, fleet, you are spending at, at the right level. So that's also something that could, uh, is considered by the operator. Uh, the question is, we are 
all having uh, in mind that there is a large, uh, I would say, potential market. But we don't make business with potential figures. We make business with real figures. And so we need to get the commitments from the operators. Of course, we need to achieve the homologation, to get uh, the agreement to operate the services. But we must get put on the table the, the figures, the commitments of the operators. And so this is one of the reasons why uh, everybody is waiting, uh, uh, everybody in fact. So you are, as operator, waiting for uh, OEMs, and OEMs are waiting for customers. So as the, 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 the cost, the investment that have, have to be engaged uh, at OEM level are significant, our CEOs are expecting these commitments. And so I believe that through the, the, the proof of concept that you have seen today, but several ones that you, have, you, you participated uh, before, you are totally convinced of uh, the maturity of the solution. And so now the authorities are to move ahead with us to, uh, uh, to, to get these homologations. And so the process is ongoing. We are starting to, uh, this discussion and we hope to be able to, to perform the first homologation in France uh, in the coming months. Um, and then uh, agreements to operate, to run the, the fleets, the autonomous fleets is also uh, a roadblock that we expect to be uh, uh, released during the, the coming months. What we need now is uh, the commitment of the operators. How many, how many buses you are ready to invest? Uh, we, we put that figures all together and then you get the confidence to the industrial partners. Otherwise, we will wait, 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 wait. Uh, and I believe that today there is no technical, no technical and business reason regarding what we know uh, and, and the maturity of the technology. So you have, uh, uh, in, one, uh, in a nutshell, the, 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 the advantages of the solution. I won't come back on that. Uh, so on control ODDs, uh, we are reducing far, far, far much the, the, I would say, the complexity. And so that's interesting to operate in such condition, acquiring a lot of data, a lot of complementary uh, use cases, and and uh, improving in, in a certain way the total reliability of, of, of the service. And that's key for, for everybody, for both the industrial partners and, and the operators. Um, just to, to share with you the part of the, so I mentioned that it's a significant of our cost. So it's 30% of the cost of the autonomous bus. Of course, if you put that in front of the car, it's not 30%. It's 60 or 70% of the cost of the, of uh, a C-segment car. So you have not the same, or perhaps more, more than that, 80%. So you cannot, uh, you can understand that it's a significant cost for the bus, uh, but it's acceptable cost, as mentioned. Uh, I come back a bit on the history. Uh, I mentioned 2018, so we started in 2017, the discussion we will ride. We are partnering because we are believing for a long time that uh, uh, we can uh, find um, altogether uh, a business, uh, an interesting business. It's, uh, it's not, uh, I would say, a simple story. You know that for a long time. Some, some uh, people around the table are working on autonomous driving for, uh, I would say, decades, perhaps uh, two decades. No one. No, no one, that's enough. <laughs> they are still uh, having plenty of energy, but uh, now it's uh, time for business. And no, and no more for uh, discussion, discussion, uh, risk analysis, and so on. So I believe that uh, Chinese people are pragmatic. You have seen that they are operating the services for five years. Yes, five years ago, it was not perfect. And today, it's not totally perfect. But it's good enough. And I, I would uh, keep this, uh, this uh, sentence, good enough. That means the right level of uh, reliability, right level of safety, and up to us to make it uh, a reality for our customers, in fact. You have seen that uh, around Roland Garros, so that's a nice place to demonstrate the capabilities. Uh, so we are benefiting from the large exposure due to, uh, to Roland Garros, so that's the second year in a row that we are doing that. But as industrial partners and, and uh, business owners, we are not pleased uh, to, to repeat a proof of concept. Next year, uh, I expect that we won't make a third proof of concept. We should get uh, uh, it in, uh, in, the, in the real life somewhere in France, in Europe, Brussels. Why not? Ready?
<laughs> You're already, <laughs> yes. And so, uh, service is reliable, remarkable. So, up to us to make it a success. Thank you. <laughs>